Good morning, friends, wherever you are. And yes, I did spill my coffee. One of you said that, and uh, but I was able to get it all together. Welcome to Cichlids and Coffee. <laughs> I think I am a couple minutes late. Sorry about that. But a uh, lot to do around here. We're expecting uh, some out-of-town guests for the holidays. There will be no live stream next weekend since uh, my out-of-town guests will be staying through uh, the following weekend after Thanksgiving. So there will be no live stream next week. I am sorry about that, but uh, maybe uh, we'll make it up with a maybe a Wednesday cichlids and suds after Thanksgiving. That might be kind of fun to catch up. We should all have uh, finished digesting by then. So, <laughs> so uh, let's see here. Who do we have in house? Who is in the house? Scruffy City Aquatics. Hey, Scruffy City. Now, if you would like some uh, stickers, I know I do this sometimes. Sometimes I don't. But if you'd like some stickers, uh, write to me at ben.o.cichlid, and I will get you some stickers for being the first person on the chat. And uh, Cat Sailor's in the house. Hey, Michael. Michael Machos is here. And Whips World. Hey, Whips World. Good to see you, my friend. And let's see. James Green is here. Hey, James. In the jeans is in the house. And let's see here. Steve, it looks like Squiddy4 Armstrong <laughs> from Scotland. Boy, I'd love to go visit your country. And let's see. Well, let me see. Patrick Maloney in chilly Dallas. Yeah, it's chilly Nashville right now. We're getting into the 20s at night. Low 30s. Casual Coomer. Casual Coomer Pond. Harry, good evening to you. Sounds like a name in India. Is it in India or maybe Pakistan? And let's see. Peas and Haps Forever in the house. Hello, my friend. Hey, Salient. And NJW from the UK. Wow, I love this sort of international presence that we have here. Maybe this is a good time for uh, the UK. And S. Sharista. 26 degrees in Washington. Wow. I've heard uh, some big storms are hitting up there, and also in uh, Montana, I think. It's all shut down and just some real serious weather. Uh, Kendra Crippen, good morning to you, my friend. Denny's in the house. GP's in the house. Cichlid Kings, looks like my moderators are on post. I love it. Hey, Jeff. Jeff Hester is here. Chris G. in the house. And Daniel Macon. And Meme Guy, hello everyone, turning in from Johannesburg, South Africa. Wow, what an international uh, international group we have today. Meme Guy, love that name. And it's trademarked. Big Shrimpin. Big Shrimpin is here, and so is Melissa Steves. Hope I pronounced that right. New Local Austin, Mickey Sr. Well, we got a whole bunch of great new names here, Billy D. Hey, Frank, good to see you. Frank Vio, saludos, amigo. Oink Supreme, Oink Master Supreme. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. And let's see here. Darren Lockhart is in the house. Blazek, I'm not even going to try the last name. And from Poland. Wow. What an international showing. I love it. Totally love it. Lawrence Quidice. Hey, Ben, first live stream I've been to and learned a lot from you and Caveman Aquatics. Just started keeping fish, although I'm raising koi fish. I still love the knowledge you provide. Very cool, Lawrence. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Had the pleasure of meeting Caveman over at Aquashella. Very nice fellow. Luke Biba, Chicago. Three seasons, summer, winter, and construction. <laughs> we have a lot of construction here in Nashville, too. It's everywhere, everywhere. Chris G, long time no see. Good to see you. And let's go ahead and uh, what do you say we go ahead and officially, officially start the live stream? You know what's next.
if you're new to the channel and you like what's going on here, be sure to hit that sub and that bell and that thumbs up. Let YouTube know something good's going on. And uh, that way they will recommend us to other fish keepers. We're getting real close to 50,000 and that's getting real exciting. Big shout out to the channel sponsor, The Cichlid Shack in Tempe, Arizona. Uh, be sure to use the discounts available shack attack 15 for fish orders over 100 dollars and shack attack 10 for everything else like supplies food extreme food piscine energetics uh he's, he's got everything over there and uh use shack attack 10 for that the discounts unfortunately cannot be applied to shipping shipping is crazy as you know so let's see Let's uh, pay some bills real fast, and I promise we will be done with that. But first of all, big shout out to my wonderful Patreon supporters. Without them, a lot of the projects that I do in the, in the fish room would not be possible. So a big shout out to my Patreon supporters. If you'd like to know about becoming a Garage Gang member, a Patreon supporter, it starts for as little as $3 a month, and the details are in the description under the video. So check that out, a very key component of the channel. And for those of you who would like to support the channel in other ways, be sure to visit the uh, spring, my spring store. You can pick up t-shirts and coffee mugs and stuff like that. Use the Teespring link. And sometimes I forget to say this, but be sure to use the live stream, live stream for a 10% discount at the Teespring store, live spring live stream <laughs> and uh, visit my Amazon store. I have a lot of the products that I discuss and review are at my Amazon store. When you use the Amazon link to access Amazon, anything you buy on Amazon gives the channel credit and your price stays the same. So it's a, uh, it's a real good deal. So I have a video for you folks today. I, uh, it's a video that's going to be released. I believe this afternoon or tomorrow. But being my live stream crew, you get a a um, an early an early peek. When you watch the video, you'll understand why I was uh, why I was inspired to to name this live stream what I did because um, I did a bit of a, a thorough spring cleaning in the fish room and. It gave me a real appreciation for some of the differences that exist between certain kinds of uh, media, certain kinds of substrate, and things of that nature, and and it just really helped me to to, uh, to appreciate that, and then also want to speak with you about what some of those thoughts. Not and, and there's a big difference here, and I, and I hope you and I hope this comes across, and, and maybe sometimes it doesn't, but I don't. I don't speak um, at you. I, I always feel, even though we're, we're over, you know, over this medium here, over video medium, uh, I, I always feel like I speak with you. And so when I share things with you, I share them with the intention of just saying, hey, look, here's what happened with me. And uh, this has been my observation. This has been my conclusion. What's been your conclusion? Uh, what, what's been your experience with that? And when I say always be learning, and I say that that at this channel, right, that that's the motto: always be learning, and and uh, and we all learn from each other. That those are two very very sincere mottos to this channel, and so it's it's not it it it's you know you, you've heard the old thing: teach, don't preach. And and I'm and and I can't even call it teach. It's more like let's talk about this. Let's talk about filter media. Let's talk about substrates. Let's talk about uh, the you know sumps versus canisters. Let's talk about these subjects, and let me get your experience, and 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 I'll tell you mine, and let's see where we end up. And and by sharing these these kinds of conversations, you know this kind of input output, we all become better fish keepers. I think I think over the long haul, and so. Um, now, what are you guys doing? You guys are, are hitting me with these super chats. What's happening here? Let me see. I saw a couple of them show up. I really appreciate that support. And it looks like I got hit by a... <laughs> hey, hey, Robert. Robert comes in with nine ninety nine. Some help for the channel. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. 
and uh, very appreciate Saline Aquatics, 55 gallon stocking ideas. And thank you for that, Saline. I appreciate that. Twisted Adjust. God, I love that name. That will be a great uh, name for a chiropractor. Twisted Adjust. And let's see here. All right. So at any rate, I think you get what I'm saying. And so, so I, I did a, 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 a bit of a spring cleaning and... And I tell you, I, I I came to some conclusions about my favorite, my favorite substrate. And let me let me just do this. Let me let me play this video for you. The the, the Patreons already have had access to this video. I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of embed it here in the live stream, and then I'm gonna go ahead and post it as a video for the general public. I think some people look at the live stream, and they look at the one hour, and they go, "No way, no way, man." And so they keep, you know, they keep searching on YouTube. But so putting it out as something separate is, is good. Hey, Whips World, thanks for that live, for that uh, super chat. I appreciate that. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and play this video. And the name of the video is going to be, um, I think it's the. Um, Behind the scenes, uh, the dirty, the dirty, the dirty part of a fish room, or something like that. I, I, I forget the actual name of it, but it's going to be posted tonight. But anyway, here you, here you go. Here, you, enjoy it, and uh, we can chat during the video. Unlike a movie theater, we can we can talk during this video. When you see my fish room in videos, you know you see the the room completely cleaned up and uh, everything put together and uh, the tanks are impeccable. What you don't see is the, uh, the sort of ugly side of that equation. That's all the work that goes into it. It's Friday, and I uh, put off a couple of the uh, uh, maintenance steps that I normally you know, carry out on Tuesday. You remember that video, Touch Up Tuesday? So I'm doing everything today, Friday, so I've got a very busy day here. And I'm going to show you what's going on in here so you can see the amount of work necessary so that on Saturday when I show you the tanks during the live stream, it all looks uh, uh, effortless and perfect. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. I'm not doing any work today on the small tanks like this little Pleco tank. All the work is gonna be uh, with the larger tanks, like the 300. Um, I uh, did a little, a little glass cleaning on the uh, on the beta tank, as you can see here. So I just cleaned up the, the front panel and and also stirred up the substrate a little bit and 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 uh, moved those uh, filters in the back there, move them up a notch so they can absorb a little bit more. So you're gonna see my tanks real foggy today because I've stirred stuff up. There's the uh, Nemo and there's a uh, Mr. Mustard too. But all of this that you see floating around, all that's gonna be gone in just a few minutes. As soon as it settles down and gets absorbed by those little, she say, filters in the back corner. I was running them on the first setting, the lightest setting, but I've moved them up to the second setting and see if they actually can uh, capture more more waste. This fish is ready, this, this uh, liar tail. Molly is ready to go back into the, you can see it looks great, good color, sparkles on the body, and uh, his tail looks perfect. He's ready to go back into the 20 tall, but I'm a little reluctant because he is a, a, a bigger fish, and I've got some little babies in here, and I'm afraid that if I put him in right now, you see a little baby right there. If I put him in, uh, he might go after the babies. There's some super teeny ones. They're like the size of like a period on a sentence. I don't know if I can see them, they're usually hanging around this log here. But I'm afraid if he goes in there, he's going to go ahead and just eat them, even though he's pretty well fed. So, so he'll probably stay. He'll probably stay in there for a little while. And uh, nothing new on this tank. Even though I'm going to be moving things around when I get a shipment in from uh, from the cichlid shack, I pulled some plants out of the. Uh, let's go through here. Pulled some plants out of the tanks. See them here? 
they're going to get a, a treatment, oh, a couple tablespoons of bleach in a bucket uh, for 24 hours just to get cleaned up, get some of the algae, some of this brown algae off of them. I could scrub them by hand. This could take me forever. Here's some, uh, these are socks from the sump that got swapped out. And they all go into a, they all go into a bucket and, and then, oh, once every week or two, they get washed in the washing machine with half a cup of, uh, half a cup of bleach. And then they get a couple of water rinses so that uh, there's no bleach residue. Here's a 55 gallon community tank. It got its panels cleaned up. A nice water change. Both filters are running during the process. Keeping white substrate, especially like sand clean, is really a task, really a chore. So if you're gonna get a tank and set it up with this white powdery, sugar-like, uh, I think it's uh, I think it's, it's naturals, it's uh, carib sea naturals, uh, white sand, if you get that, uh, just know that's gonna be a lot of work. It's gonna be a lot of work. I'm tempted to go ahead and clean out that uh, internal filter as well, but I might just let it go for a, another week since I did so much in the tank. I moved the wood around, cleaned off the plants a little bit, moved the rocks around. So uh, that might be enough for that tank for right now. This tank here, again, got a good water change of the 55, which is divided with one of those dividers from uh, from Pets, uh, oh, what's the name? I'll put the, I'll put the link below on who makes these dividers. They're awesome. I've got them for 55 gallon and for 29. There's the auto fair and extensor stigma, if you can see them. His left eye looks perfect. His right eye has lost the fuzziness, but it's, uh, it, I think he's pretty much blind on the right side. See the silver dollars back there? A couple of them back there. They're probably gonna get moved out. I'm not sure if I put them, if I put them into the community tank. Maybe I'll put them over here into the 90. This 90 gallon has a couple, a couple of those uh, hang on back Marine Land Emperor 400s. I let them run during the cleaning and I've done a glass cleaning with this, with this Rigugu glass cleaner. I needed the real big uh, magnet because this glass is so thick. It's like half an inch, really, really thick. So regular, uh, you know, regular type magnet glass cleaners just don't work. They don't hold on, they, they break off. I've got to flip the lid on it at least once a week. You can see it starts to bow and then it sticks up on the corners. So I've got to flip it. And that's a center support piece down there that I had cut. Move this light away from the water. Got to keep these lights nice and nice and dry if you can. These are all. Uh, someone asked about this. The the aquas, the higers, uh, beams work. Those lights, they're all they're all watertight. You know, they can fall in, and uh, as long as you pull them out quickly and dry them off, you're okay. Uh, they're not waterproof, but they're certainly water resistant. So. <clears throat> Big water change here. I say big, maybe. What do you think? Twenty percent, thirty percent, and also a big water change. Water change going on here. I'm still draining this tank. Usually, I'll drain it using the FX6. You see, the FX6 is running. You see it output back there. So I let it run. But usually, what I would do is I would take that FX6 and I would just run it, run a hose. This hose here, I would just take it and attach it and and run it out the garage, out the bottom of the garage. But I didn't want to open the garage because it's like you know 30 degrees outside. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to uh, let that cold air in here. And as it is, I'm running my my floor heater. This is a great floor heater, by the way, Doctor Heater. Doctor Heater. He said it's 68, and it's keeping the room really comfortable. And it's not even running right now because it's got the room at the target temperature. It uses a thousand watts. You just gotta make sure you have the right wattage available. So um, I'm gonna drop this. This tank probably another three or four inches. I uh, lightly raked the surface of the substrate, flipped over the rocks. You can see it looks pretty good. This will be nice and happy. Unfortunately, I had one fish jump and that was the fish I was keeping over here in the eight gallon. I pulled out, I pulled out a Johnson eye because he was being harassed by this uh, Buchochromus Rhodesia yellow. When I went to bed, everything was good. He was relaxing underneath that little shelf. And then the next morning, 
when the beagles came down into the fish room, they immediately went over to the dried up fish lying on the floor and pointed him out to me. And uh, uh, kind of a sad loss, a beautiful fish. And he was almost ready to go back in. I was just giving him a break because he'd been harassed for so long. The size of that vieja. Just an absolute beast. Getting some beautiful pink around the gills. Great color in the body. Pushing over 10 inches for sure. Uh, this tank here, of course, is really cloudy because I did a, a uh, vacuuming. I don't vacuum this tank that often, but uh, I decided to go ahead and do it at least a couple times a year, right? I do it. And because I run this real powerful 3,500 gallon per hour um, weight maker, and it kind of suspends everything. It's on a timer and uh, it's unplugged right now because it was running during the water change, but uh, it's on a timer and and it, uh, it gets everything suspended and into the filters. However, when you have this kind of substrate, you can't help but, but catch, catch waste. And so uh, I gave it a, a very sort of traditional type of vacuuming, right? Where you push the, uh, the vacuum gently into the, uh, into the substrate, maybe a half inch or so. There's sand below it. See that sand? That's aragonite and sand from the prior uh, African cichlid tank. I just left that in there. That's the sand that the geos are gonna be shifting around if I should ever bring the geos over to this tank. I was talking to James Largo over at the cichlid shack. He suggested that I bring all the fish from the 90 gallon and add them to this tank because he thinks this tank right now is a little bit boring. And so he said, go ahead, you know, left the camera out here for tomorrow's live stream. But so these fish were all living together at one point. So he said, yeah, just go ahead and throw them in there and see how they do. And uh, it might work, it might work. And what that'll do is that'll free this tank up to become a, uh, a planted, a planted uh, discus tank. Now I'll tell you something, sand, this sand, especially when you have water movement, uh, a lot of water movement, stays way cleaner, way, way cleaner than uh, the, the, the heavier, type of substrate like this, which traps detritus and allows the detritus to sink down between the pebbles. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, sand, I think, is just a, a, a superior substrate. Doesn't have to be a super fine powdery sand. I think that uh, this, this size here, or uh, this size that you see here, is kind of an ideal size. Uh, this is an ideal size over here. That's ideal, but th uh, but this this here this this sugar powder uh, type is I think too fine, and every time I do a water change, you can't help but but suck some of it up and have it go down into the sink, and of course that's never that's never a good thing. As you can see, I've got a lot more work to do here. I got to refill these tanks, treat them all. I got to clean off the lids. There's some algae buildup on those lids, and also on this this piece right here, it's got to get cleaned up. So there's a lot more to do here. And that's my, uh, that's my Friday. That's my Friday update. And that doesn't include doing anything with the, uh, with these guys over here. I might, I'll probably do a midweek water change on this 20, 20 gallon tall. Now, a lot of you said that this bar light that I don't like, I gave it a bad rating in my review. Some of you said it was intended to be at the bottom facing this way, but at the bottom so that the colored bubbles come up and uh, uh, still a little bit too gimmicky for me, but I am going to try it that way just in all fairness. Ultimately, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this light here. This light will end up. This is a Higer razor thin, super thin, full spectrum light. That light will, will come over here. Uh, if anything, just be, just to help the plants. These uh, wisteria don't look don't look that good in the stems. They don't look that good in the stems. But I'm getting new growth at the top. 
and that that that's cool that's cool so that's that's a good sign meanwhile the plants in the beta tank uh, especially the sprite are dropping a tremendous amount of roots you can see them lots of roots coming off the sprite and that's also a good sign and again that haziness is going to be all gone in just in just a few minutes so that's the update on the fish room the uh the ugly side of <laughs> <laughs> I actually enjoy enjoy doing the work, love doing the work. I find it very therapeutic and there's a great sense of uh, satisfaction and completion when you're done. So uh, I'm going to get back at it. I probably got about another hour or so, maybe an hour and a half. And, uh, and then I'll be done and I can relax until uh, maybe Monday or Tuesday where I jump into it again. So, so there you have it, my friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like the channel, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. We're almost at 50,000. Hit that bell. Hit that uh, notification bell to subscribe and all that good stuff. And I hope to see you on Saturday for cichlids and coffee. We'll talk about the fish room. We'll talk about fish, filtration, everything else in between. And if you want to support the channel, consider becoming a member of the Garage. Yes, this is a garage of the Garage Gang. And... Uh, become a monthly supporter starts for as little as three dollars a month all right my friends thank you that's it for me bye bye well there you go i hope you like that video and <clears throat> it's going to be public this afternoon or maybe tomorrow morning patreons have already had access to it uh joe thank you for that super chat i appreciate that and we were able to restore Denny's, uh, uh, Dennis Rudell, I call him Denny, Denny's uh, moderator status. And we made uh, Salient Aquatics a moderator as well. Moderators help to keep the chat uh, moving along and they help to find links for things. Like if I mention a video or a website and they also, um, of course, uh, they go ahead and block uh, trolls, trolls and people who make comments that are not polite or disrespectful, that kind of stuff. So at any rate, the work really paid off. Take a look at the, um, take a look at the 200. Get this thing. 200 is looking lush. What do you think about moving all those fish in the 90 over to the 200? There'd be, um, there would be a green tear, a little green tear, a couple very large severums. I mean, I'm sorry, one large severum and a medium small severum and a red shoulder and a gold red spotted. And also, um, also we'd probably have a uh, AC Hecli in there. I mean, do you think that would be a, a bloodbath or do you think it would be, uh, it would be worth doing. Now you won't believe the amount of crud, and this is using my system of uh, of using a powerful wave maker. I still had a lot of crud in that in that substrate, and that that substrate, that pebble, that that sort of a p p size, or in this case, this is river rock, larger than p size. It's a little bit larger, probably uh, one size up from what you would call. Uh, you know, like like, like your like your pea sized stones, but th this even with the with the very strong wave maker, thirty five hundred gallons uh, per hour, and of course the uh, the the twenty five hundred gallon per hour uh, pump uh, coming up from the uh, sump. There's a lot of water movement in here, but with that water movement, I still pulled a tremendous amount of crud uh, crud out of that of that two hundred gallon and a surprising amount. So, you know, I, 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 I normally vacuum, like, my big tanks. I vacuum them usually a couple times a year, maybe, maybe three times a year uh, where I do a vacuuming because my wave makers have been able to suspend everything so that it gets into the filters. But with this kind of gravel, it looks like I'm going to have to be a little bit more... Um, more frequent uh, compare, comparing that to um, if we go over to the 300 it's my big head there's the 300 you, you see that type of substrate there it's a finer substrate that packs it packs down really tight and as a result 
the detritus just stays on top. And because of that, the, the strong water circulation, in the case of the 300, all I have in there are the, um, the pumps that are coming out from the, from the sump, and that's creating enough circulation so that when I, when I stick a siphon in there, I don't really find anything. I, I find just a few little teeny pieces here and there tucked under a rock. But otherwise, it stays really, really clean. And, and same thing for this, for the 90. The, the substrate of the 90, perhaps my favorite substrate, just because of the color combinations, it's called Lapis Luster. Lapis Luster. And it was originally purchased from a group in, from a place in California and then brought over to, to Nashville by a friend of mine who, who, then, um, who then just sold it to me. That's how we met, actually. He sold me this substrate, and I just love it. Lapis Luster. And it packs pretty tight. The geos love it because it's a great size to sift around in. And when I go to vacuum, I, I find almost nothing, and that's just off the circulation from two hang-on-back filters. So it keeps everything sort of... But you can tell if you look at the edge, if you look just below the, the line there, the gravel line uh, below it, you see some things do sink in, but, the, but it's very slow and over time. And I tend to just leave it alone. Again, I use that sort of deep substrate philosophy that it's creating some beneficial bacteria down there. What I don't like is, uh, and again, let's see if I can spin the camera around. As I mentioned in the video, I don't like this white substrate. Not sure if you can even see it without tilting the entire tripod, but that substrate, that's like a talc, like a talc powder. And it's... Uh, it's naturals from Carib Sea, and I don't recommend. Um, I don't recommend it for two reasons. One is it shows every little particle, every little bit of detritus is going to show up, and um, and also the other reason I don't recommend it is because you can't help you can't help but but scoop some of it up when you're vacuuming. When you're vacuuming, you can't help but scoop some of it up. So I don't necessarily recommend it. It's not. It's not a. It's not a bad substrate. And I'm. I'm thinking it might. It might be a. It might be a good substrate for. Um, for discus, because it would. It would force you. It would force you to really keep, really stay on top of things, and in that way it would be a, a good thing because with discus you want to keep very you know pristine conditions. And this mic over. Hope you can hear me okay. The uh, so I would say that a uh, my favorite my favorite at this stage and everything I say always is subject uh, to uh, change without notice. <laughs> but as of today, my favorite substrate is sand that is not too fine. Uh, perhaps. Uh, uh, I'm not really sure in the size how you how you would measure it. Maybe uh, maybe four or five millimeters, maybe in that range, four or five. I mean, comparing it to a pellet, you know, like a like a maybe like not a peewee, but more of a a little bit larger than a peewee pellet, right? And and I, I think that's 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 the best because just the regular water circulation is going to keep things clean. Now, one thing I will say about the white substrate is that when, uh, when I see a pocket of waste, the next day it's gone. So it, it, it does pack really, really tight and doesn't let things really sink in. And so it, it does allow things to get suspended and, and, and drawn into the filters pretty easily. So, you know, what's, what's your favorite? What's your favorite substrate? And I, I'd like to know what your favorite substrate is and why that is your favorite substrate. I don't think that that um, when you start getting into the larger pieces, the larger like gravel type substrates, 
uh, pea gravel in particular. And in, in, I remember back in California, I had what they called crushed coral, but it was big pieces of shells and things like that. You can't help but trap, but trap junk, and it's not going to matter how how much, uh, you know, how much wave maker or power head you're running. It's going to stay wedged in there, and it also amazes me sometimes how you can have a piece of decor or a rock that you've pushed really down into the sand, and then when you lift it, it's got waste under it. How does that even happen? How, can you explain that to me? How does how how do you push a rock an an inch into into the substrate, and then when you lift it, there's 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 gunk under it. I mean, how does how does that? I mean, does the gunk like crawl into? <laughs> I don't even know how that happens. Crazy. So, um, <clears throat> that's sort of where I'm at right now, and. Uh, Let's talk about some other topics that are kind of fun, and and, and one of them is uh, one of them is is a sump versus a canister. Okay. Now, for a lot of folks, especially if you're new to fish keeping, both the idea of a sump and a canister are a bit intimidating, maybe even a little bit overwhelming. Once you you you. you you, you start using them, once you understand them, once you study a little bit about them, they become actually extremely simple, very, very simple. And one of the things that I forgot to mention in a video, uh, it, it, it was entitled like up, how to up your fish keeping game in, in, in 2023. Uh, maybe one of the moderators can share that link, how to up, up your fish keeping game, I think in 2023. I forgot to mention that one of the things I suggest is that whatever filtration you're using, uh, tear it apart. Uh, just tear it apart. Uh, every now and then, just take it and and disassemble it, and you know, pull pull the impeller out and 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 take the motor off and 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 just really really get a real thorough working understanding of your filters. And that's that's all part of the process. It's all part of the uh, like learning the learning process and uh, it, it it's uh it's really made fish keeping a lot better for me to really understand how these things are working and how to keep them working in in really tip-top shape so when you look at canisters you have um some big advantages the, the biggest advantage of course is that is they can run for very long periods of time. They they can hold a very large amount of media. When set up correctly, they're extremely quiet, and all you have in the aquarium is an input and output. Like I have that that big giant tub of an FX six running on this on this tank behind me here, right? Which I guess those are also outputs that help to circulate the water but when you look at the tank you're not really being overwhelmed by take a look here when when you look when you look at this tank you're not you're not being overwhelmed by equipment you can tell because of the of the water breakup that there's that there's some flow occurring at the top so there's an output on each side and I do that on purpose, right, for oxygen. There's a heater. There's a heater on the side panel of the rear right. One of those big Heiger double, you know, du double tube heaters, but it's black on black, so you really can't see it against the black background. There's also a heater in the sump. But one advantage of the uh, of canisters. And I guess I'm going to be redundant here. And 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 sumps is that you can hide equipment. And so when you look at the aquarium, you're like, well, wait a minute, where is the equipment? There isn't. You can't even see. There isn't even a thermometer in there. Nothing. So if you look closely, yeah, you can see the black sponge of the FX6, the black uh, pre-filter, black on black. Again, it's, it's somewhat disguised, and the outputs. And those that's those are the biggest. The biggest advantages, really, of of both sumps and canisters, is that you don't have any eyesores in the aquarium, any equipment that's that's distracting 
from uh, you know from the fish from the fish as opposed to where I have these long wide uh, tubes in the hang on back for the marine lands or those internal filters I mean the internal filters uh, are are effective but they take up a lot of space in the aquarium and they also are uh, they're they're big and bulky I mean if we look if we look over here at the uh, the internal filter See again, if you look here, where's where's the equipment? Where's the equipment on the two ten? There's a there's a tube input for the sun sun that you can see there behind the wood. Again, black on black, and then you have an output near the top for the sump. Otherwise, as you look around, what do you see? You see wood, rocks, and artificial plant and fish. But if you look in this tank here. Not sure if you can even see it with this, with this lighting. If you look at, you look there on the left side there, you've got that giant 35 watt expert Matic, and it's taking up swim room, and it's. Uh, I'm I'm really happy with the black on black that they've gone to instead of the white that they were using before. You can see the uh, Otto Fernix Tetra Stigma is more active than he's been. He's probably hungry. Need to feed him. At this stage, he's pretty much uh, a one-eyed fish. So we'll have to come up with a pirate name. So whatever your favorite pirate is, go ahead and share it in the chat there. We'll, we'll give him a pirate name. But he's a one-eyed fish right now. The uh, heavy infection has really calmed down on that right eye. A lot of, lot of water changes. Really keeping him in pristine conditions has made the difference. He'd probably love to get through that barrier and get to those little silver dollars on the other side. It'd be a treat for him. So at any rate, you can see there the uh, it, it's just a, a a real bit of an eyesore by comparison. So really, the big advantage on on both canisters and sumps is the. Uh, the lack of equipment in the in the actual aquarium. Now with a sump, it's very easy. It's very easy with a sump to go as much as a year. You can go a year and just do top offs, uh, routine water changes, and really not touch anything in the sump. So. I mean, to me, that's very, very cool. And when you do have to touch something in the sump, it's very, very easy because it's, 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 a, it's an aquarium, basically. It's a big tank that you just reach in and grab and pull out a bag of, of, of carbon and throw it out and put another bag in or put, put some pyrogen in, pull some pyrogen out. It takes literally seconds to do that as opposed to with a canister where you got right, to unplug, crack it open, and and you get in there and if what you're trying to get to is on a bottom tray you've got to pull all the trays out and get in there and so when it comes to maintenance and when it comes to actual du duration between cleaning nothing nothing compares to a sump the other area where a sump is is far superior is in added water volume now, in my case, I'm not taking as much advantage of that as as uh, as I could, because I'm using small DIY sumps. I have a 40 gallon breeder sump behind me, and I have a 29 gallon uh, sump on the 200, and both of those were are, are DIY'd. The one behind me, the 40 gallon breeder, is the simplest sump imaginable, and, and if and if you're interested in that topic. One of the moderators can share that link on, uh, on, on, I think it's called Simple DIY Sump. It's basically three four inch wide, 14 inch high sponges going from uh, like a coarse and a medium from a company called Swiss Tropicals. They make pour it and, you know, matten sponges, right? So I've got these three sponges and then I've got some uh, media that was, that was provided to me by my friends over at Sarah, the, the Sarah Bio Media, which is a, an exceptional media. I've got a mountain of that, and, and there's no baffles. There's no baffles. The water just flows, dumps in through a sock, which serves as the best pre-filter imaginable, right? 
you have uh, some socks that you swap out like once a week or so. And so the water dumps into the sock, goes out the sock, through the three four-inch wide sponges, and then cascades over over the Sarah uh, rings, right? Those rings that, that, that Sarah provided me with. And, and then the, the two she, she say pumps pump all the water back up. And it, it's just such an easy system. But yet the, the mechanics of it, the basics of it, is the same as every filter. Every filter is the same in that sense. Water comes from the aquarium, goes through things and over things, and then dumps back into the tank. It's the exact same, except it's done in a bigger, a bigger format. And if you're afraid of uh, flooding a sump, I can tell you this with, with a high degree of certainty. You, you have probably a, you have a, a higher probability of getting a leak in a canister than you have of flooding a sump if your sump is set up correctly. And, and that's the key. It has to be set up correctly. You have to uh, have the right amount of water volume in there so that if all power were to go out and the tank drains, it doesn't overflow the sump. It's impossible to overflow the sumps because the way the water gets to the sump in what are called synergy, synergy overflow boxes have the teeth, the, the gyre, the, the little teeth that the water goes into. Those are right near the very top of the aquarium. And this is why you, you'll see these aquariums from, um, from glass cages. They have these, these water line, uh, they have like water line bl blacked out like right here. That's a, that's a blackout at the top, and you have something similar on the 200 with a very, a very thick top white frame on the 200, if you can see it. And so you can run the sump so that the water is just above the gyre cascading in. So when the power goes out, the water level drops just a teeny bit, and, and, and so you, your, your sump your tank underneath your aquarium, it goes up a couple inches, and that's it. So you can't you can't really flood. And like I said, you're probably more likely getting caught on the carpet here. You're probably more likely to to get a leak a leak in your canister than you are to get a a flood from your sump if it's set up correctly. So in, in my mind, for 125 gallons or greater, uh, sumps the king. You, you can't really touch a sump because of the added water volume, the fact that you can go a year and, and the many, many variations and ways that you can set it up. There, it's unlimited what you can do in there. Uh, next would be, of course, a canister because it's, it's out of sight, tremendous media capacity, and a lot of water movement, right? Like, you know, 200 to 500 gallons per hour uh, water movement. And so it's a, it, it's, a, it's a very, very good system. So I like them both. I like them both. And if you notice on my larger tanks, I use both a sump and a canister. And that way I have a, a bit of backup. If, if one's getting serviced or breaks down, I have that redundancy. I have that backup going on. And I think that that helps a lot. And... When it comes to media, you, you, you know, if you've been watching my channel, you know that when it comes to media, for me, uh, anything that, that, that bacteria can attach to and grow on, in my mind, is a suitable media. Expensive media manufacturers, including my friend in Great Britain, uh, John, who, who owns, uh, somebody I'm drawing, a, a John Through, who owns an expensive, they, they sell expensive media, and probably doesn't like hearing this, but anything that will grow, uh, that stuff can attach you. I did a video one time, and I talked to Corey, and, and I used a, 
a comment that he made about using gym socks, using gym socks as media. And uh, it's an old video of mine. I think it's, I think it's at the title of it is gym socks as media. And so for me, sponges have become my, my go-to in a lot of ways. The only reason I have the bio rings behind me from Sarah is because Sarah provided me with some and it's a company I trust and I figured why not I'll put them in there but if they hadn't done that I would have gone with just the sponges and a little bit of crushed coral just just you know just for uh, buffering purposes right so I was thinking of biohome my friend who make who owns biohome and distributes biohome out of, a biohome out of the UK I think it's great great wave engineering here in the United States that distributes biohome I had great success with Biohome. I had great success with several high-end medias, you know, a Marine Pure, uh, you know, things like that, both the balls and the blocks, right? But I'll tell you, I, I, I've arrived at a point now where I think a medium sponge is, is going to do the job. And you rinse those things out, and, and you, you put them back in, and they last forever. And they just do a great job. Even in my hang on back filters, I just have sponges that I've cut to fit and I just drop them in. I just drop them in the hang on back filters and then I pull them out, you know, once a month, give them a good rinse and drop them back in. Sometimes I rinse them in tap water, sometimes in tank water, usually in tap water. And uh, Jason Adams, who I think is a marine biologist, Jason Adams. And at Prime Time Aquatics, he has a video on how he's been rinsing sponges with tap water for years. He never has a problem. Never has a problem. And again, this gets back to the idea that your that your um, bacteria is is everywhere in your aquarium. It's in your substrate. It's on your decor. It's on the walls. It's on the plants. It's everywhere. So you're not going to create a massive shock. Now. You replace a bunch of a bunch of substrate, and you you pull out the decor, and you do a thorough cleaning of your filters all at the same time. Yeah, you're probably going to have a crash. You're going to have a spike in ammonia, and your fish are going to suffer. And I've done that. I, I I did too much too fast before this 90 gallon was fully established, and I paid the price. I lost some great fish, fish that I have not been able to replace. Oh, been there, done that. But but once a tank becomes more seasoned and established, and that can take anywhere from six months to a year, where a tank gets really established, really seasoned, uh, it can it can actually maintain its stability. And especially if you have uh, some minerals, some calcium and magnesium in the water, this is why throwing a a, a handful of crushed coral into a tank, any kind of tank, doesn't matter what kind, isn't a bad idea because you're going to add some, some minerals and that's going to help prevent a crash, right? It's going to prevent a, uh, a spike and a crash. I have a, a, a fair amount of crushed coral in my community tank behind me here. And over time, that tank has become very, very seasoned, very stable. I'm even able to keep uh, neons alive, which was very difficult for me in the past. And I don't know why, what it is with me and neons. You know, I'll show, show them to you. Of course, you have a, the, the light, that bar that you see there is a light bar. You can see that tank is just rocking. It's going to look a lot better when I put some uh, live plants in it, get rid of those plastic plants and put live plants. Maybe attach some Anubias to that driftwood. But I've got some um, serpes in, red serpes. I got some lemons in there. I got some Buenos Aires tetras. I got some rummy nose. I've got some Cory cats. I've got a whip tail, armored catfish that hangs out by the heater. And, and I've got some neons that are hiding in the corner but all five of them are thriving.
All right. So, by the way, I got into an interesting discussion on Facebook with a, f a few folks talking about uh, how long you can go, whether it's a sump or a canister or even a hang on back, how long can you really go before you start to um, have some bad outcomes with filters? Can you go six months? Can you go a year? Can you go, you know, 18 months before you would start to see something really bad? And I'm actually going to be releasing a video. Watch for it. Can you really go too long between cleanings? And I'm going to get into some uh, subjects that are, I'm sure, going to create a very lively discussion. And there's some very interesting uh, theories floating around about what happens to waste inside of filters and uh, the long-term impact that can have. So uh, stay tuned for that video. I should have it for you by the middle of this coming week. So watch for that. Now, did I miss did I miss some super chats? If I did, I'm sorry. I get rolling here and I don't look at the chat because it throws me off. But let's see here. Joe Provenzano towards the... Yeah, I think I got that one. All right. And then now, why don't you hit me with some questions? Hit me with some questions. Let's, let, let's uh, open up this discussion here. Anthony Udovich, Prime is the only reason I never list any. Is that probably lost any fish? I like Prime. Prime's good stuff. I used it for years. Recently, I got a hold of Fritz Complete and uh, been using that, but I think they're both excellent, excellent products. Luke Biba, I use Fluval Dechlorinator. That takes care of both. Good stuff, you know. I trust Fluval. Paul McCartney, I started to put dates on my canister filters so I know when to do them. Yeah. Not a bad idea, you know, in that in that ways to up up your game in 2023. That video I talk about the importance of keeping a log and notes on a cell phone worked for me for many for many years. Now I have a big because I have a fish room now. I I have a big dry erase board and I keep a running record up there of the last service that I did on on things. Fritz I ordered Fritz Complete today. All right. Snorkel King Ronnie in the house. So is Luke Biba. Luke thinks that neons are a pain. <laughs> Luke, why do you think neons are a pain? I'm kind of curious. Why, why, do you, why, why do you think they're a pain? Uh, Solar King Ronnie, hey guys, sorry I'm late. I'm on the road. I was in Arizona at the Cichlid Shack. Whoa, nice, very very cool. And and what what happened at the Cichlid Shack? Did you buy a bunch of fish? I hope so. I love the Cichlid Shack. Of course, you know that they're my spot. All Phillips, I've heard mixed things about crushed coral, like parasites, but I'm not sure my guppies would benefit from it. Yeah, with guppies, you know, you could use, again, just a handful in there just to add some some minerals. <clears throat> Give it a real good rinse. I don't think that you're going to, um, I mean, I've never had a parasite issue with crushed coral. I did have some detritus worms with some aragonite, <clears throat> some detritus worms, but they went away. I started doing a little bit more. I just upped the amount of uh, cleaning and the, the the detritus worms disappeared i don't know how they how they got in here to begin with but they're more annoying than anything else they're those little cl clear stringy worms that when you do a water change or a vacuum they come out and you can see them on the glass and they're very annoying and it took me about a month to get rid of them just doing a little bit more thorough vacuuming uh, not letting any food sit on the bottom that kind of thing Let's see here. So I'm I'm cruising the chat here. 
Uh, Danny likes Eco Complete. You know, I've used Eco Complete, and that's I've got Eco Complete in almost all of my tanks, uh, except for the um, uh, for the white sand tank. But uh, but that's also a Carib Sea product. But yeah, I like Eco Complete. Good stuff. Uh, Dave Rice, no, I didn't say that. Uh, what I said about Prime Time Aquatics is that they use tap water, tap water to rinse their sponges, and they haven't had an issue. There's actually a video on it that he did about how he's been rinsing his sponges with tap water, and uh, he even refers to some of the science on it. And Philips Matrix is amazing. Now, when you say Matrix, you mean the Seachem Matrix uh, media, which is essentially a, a form of pumice, or are you talking about the mate? They also have a product. Their carbon is also called Matrix. I wish they wouldn't do that, but their carbon is also called Matrix. How do I know? I ordered some carbon and I got some Matrix media. <laughs> Robert Egan, I don't see any German Blue Rams. I love German Blue Rams, but I've had problems with them. Maybe um, maybe now that, that, as I mentioned earlier, the tanks are more seasoned, I can, I can have German Blue Rams. But they, I, they've had a real short lifespan with me. The Golden Rams, the Blue Rams, you know, your, your standard German, your, you know, all, all of the Rams for me have been very short-lived and frustrating because they are really, really uh, pretty. Jeff Hester, love your two Oscars and the Bettas. Yep, those are, I love those fish too. Easy on the, can six months easy on the canisters. I use polish pad, not floss in canisters. Yeah, yeah, that's the one thing with canisters. And so, so when do you, when do you do service on a canister? Uh, technically, you should do it when you notice a drop in flow. So if you leave your canister on when you do water changes and the and the water line goes below the output, you'll notice that it's not projecting the water the way it should, and you'll know it's time to do a water change. You, you'll know it's time to do a, a canister maintenance. After a while, you'll kind of have a feel for it, and you'll do what I call dialing it in. You'll dial in the amount of time that you you can go. In the case of the FX6 behind me, if you saw that video I, I did on it, uh, nine months, nine months is uh, with the pre-filter. Because it has a pre-filter, I can go nine months. So I'm not suggesting you go nine months. You've got to dial it in. Robert Egan, I am an unsuccessful as a German blue ram. Yeah, I don't know why. I, I used to kill neons, too. For some reason, I couldn't keep neons, and now I have five neons that are thriving. Was this a hardy batch, or is it that the tank is more mature? Uh, might be a combination of both, right? GP says that rams are not easy to keep. Now, why, why would you say that, GP? I'm curious why you would say that rams are not easy to keep. Uh, I know that they require uh, warm water. That's why you see them with discus and are more sensitive to water, change, water temperature changes, like they like to be up around 80 degrees. So uh, we'll see. Abir... Rajvanshi, Abir Rajvanshi, I'm getting back in keeping African cichlids very excited. I, I tell you, I, lo I love African cichlids. I mean, that's like the root of my, of my channel. I was keeping discus, then I went to African cichlids, started the YouTube channel, and here I am. But I, I, I love, they're, they're still, well, you see them behind me on the live stream. They're my, my core fish. The fish I love the most. <clears throat> Luke, I keep my cichlids at 84 degrees. That's warm. That's warm. You probably never get, you never get ick, do you? Ick hates it above 80 degrees and usually will not, will not uh, reproduce over 80. 
So let's see here. Any more questions, go ahead and shoot them at me now. I am all ears. Thank you for sharing that Cichlid Shack link, Cichlid Kings. Be sure to use uh, Shack Attack 15 for a 15% discount. And if you buy anything from, the, uh, from my store, from my, um, I guess they, they changed their name. But if you do, any, if you buy anything from like the mugs and stuff that are displayed underneath my videos, this is the Oscar mug, and it also has uh, the logo on it for the live stream. But if you go to my, if you go there, to Spring, uh, to the Spring store, be sure to use live stream for a ten percent discount. That should work. Gabriel's glass boxes. I have one African cichlid in with two Central American cichlids, three quarries, two goldfish, and a pleco in a thirty-eight gallon, twenty-four inch tall. That's that. That's a uh, that could be a problematic combination over time. I know that I had a quarry in with some African cichlids way, way back, and. Everything was fine until it wasn't fine. And one morning I came down and the quarries had been picked apart. So uh, keep an eye on that. Definitely keep an eye on that. Also, you, you have a combination of fish that requires, um, that requires different water. You know, some are soft water, you know, harder water, different KH, different pH. Just things to keep in mind. Uh, you, you may end up with a, some fish a little bit stressed. Very often you, you hear of combinations of different kinds of fish and you know it, it's one of those things where uh, it, it works until it until it doesn't and because it hasn't blown up doesn't necessarily mean it never will blow up so just in, in some of these combinations you just have to really keep an eye on it because it can. I mean, I had Mabuna with with peas and haps, and it was fine until uh, the Mabuna put on size, and then it wasn't fine. And they really started to um, defend large sections of the tank and attack attack the peacocks. And the peacocks were larger, but it didn't matter. It, it's it's you know it's not the size of the dog in the fight right it's the size of the fight in the dog and these these mabuna were 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 really terrorizing the peas and haps and then i i got to that point where i just had to make a decision i said okay i'm gonna I ended up giving away some beautiful mabuna so uh m phillips best filter for a 10 gallon well, honestly, I, I, I think dropping a little sponge in there would probably be fine. You can buy those little mini mini sponge filters from uh, Aquarium Co-op and just put a little inexpensive aqua top pump on it, and you should be okay. You should be okay. They also sell some really cute hang-on-back filters that are, you know, they're smaller than my fist. I mean, they're just little, little hang-on-back filters. Right with a down tube, little teeny motor on them, and those are really cool. And all you have in your tank is one little down tube, right, an intake tube, and you unplug them. You pull the sponge out, you rinse it, you put drop it back in, put the lid back on it, and uh, they have those on Amazon. Uh, Sen Senzil, Senzil, I think makes them. Anyway, really cute little things. So uh, check them out. I think they're about 15 bucks, 15 to 20 bucks. So you look at a sponge filter and you go, well, sponge filter is really cheap, but you're going to need a pump though. So that increases the cost. And you do have to reach in there. And this one, you don't have to get into the aquarium. It, it's, you know, you never, never have to stick your hand in the aquarium necessarily. You just do everything with the, with the outside. And let me see, I might even have that box around. Hold on.
I don't know where it is. Can't find it. I had the little box for that for that filter. Anyway, it's a teeny little filter about this big. I was considering getting a couple of them for my Beta Duplex, and I ended up going with those little Shisei Nanos, which are doing a pretty good job. But um, they're bulky. They're bulky. They take up tank space. And when I do need to service them, I'm going to have to get in there and right, tear them apart and all that stuff. Where those little hang-on backs are just, you, you literally just unplug, pull the sponge out, rinse it, drop it back in, plug it back in, and you're good to go. It's really simple, real simple. And you'll end up um, at l probably less money, less money than, the, than a small sponge. All right. Any other questions? Vibes Aquatics, reminding people to smash the thumbs up. And really get the word out, folks. We're getting close to 50,000 subs. So get the word out. If you belong to any fish groups, uh, you know, go ahead and uh, get the word out. We're gonna, I'm, I'm hoping I can get over 50,000 uh, just as a game. If we don't, we don't, right? But just to play the game. Hopefully we get over 50,000 in 2022. That'd be kind of a fun, a fun game. So uh, at any rate, where are we? We're at 15 minutes. We're, in, we're into overtime. We're into overtime. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, I don't want to use up too much of your Saturday. Some of you want to go, uh, go out and enjoy wherever you're at. It's kind of cold here, so I'll probably stay indoors. Maybe I'll go out later. But uh, at any rate, thank you so much for uh, uh, sitting in with me, spending some of your Saturday with me, and look for those upcoming videos, especially the one on can you go too long. I think that'll be uh, that'll generate some interesting comments, some interesting dialogue, and uh, and watch for the other video that I previewed today. I will go ahead and uh, and show that one. I'll probably post that one tonight or tomorrow, depending how the live stream goes. Uh, still go by, visit it. I know you watched it within the live stream, but go ahead and swing by, give it a thumbs up, make a comment, and that always helps. So uh, I see a lot of folks here I've never seen before. Uh, Hampton family, I I uh, I don't get paid more in. I should get paid less in overtime, and <laughs> but your cost doesn't change. Your cost doesn't change. And not only that, but remember, I'm the only YouTube channel that offers a 100% refund if you don't like the content. You get a 100% refund. Don't ever, don't ever forget that. This is the only YouTube channel that offers. <laughs> All right, my friends. Have a wonderful weekend. You are the best. Thank you to my wonderful moderators. Thank you to my wonderful Patreons. And thank you to all of you. And I will see you next week. Oh, no live stream next week. Thanksgiving weekend, we'll be taking that weekend off, but maybe a cichlid and suds the Wednesday after Thanksgiving weekend. So look for that too. All right, folks, you're the best. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.